Hello, biology class. Welcome to lesson two of the respiratory system, titled the mouth, pharynx, and larynx. This is all stuff we talked about a little bit in the digestive system unit, but we're going to talk about it in a little bit of a different context. You can see the key points, uh, mouth, cleft palate, pharynx, and larynx. Um, we all, uh, we all kind of self-explanatory and things that we've talked about before. So let's jump right in and talk about it in a breathing context. So nose to mouth, your nose and your mouth are connected by the nasopharynx and oropharynx. Um, it is at the back of your throat. That is why you can breathe through your nose or your mouth. They go to the same place. There is that connection. If you check out uh, this chain video, you can see a person put um, a necklace chain essentially through their nose, down their throat, and then you can grab it out their mouth and you can see that there's a connection. Uh, you can also, Put your sp your your uh, headphones up your nose and open your mouth, and it creates a very good speaker if uh, you know a group of people are wanting to listen to music. So check out those videos; uh, they kind of prove in different ways that your nose and your mouth are connected, uh, and that they both lead to the same place, which is your throat. So your mouth plays an important role in eating, drinking, and speaking. Speaking is a respiratory system role. Um, and mouth breathing refers to the act of breathing through the mouth if there is an obstruction to breathing through the nose. The nose is the designated breathing organ for the human body, but sometimes the mouth is easier to breathe through if we are performing a physical activity or if we are scared uh, or if you know there is a blockage to our upper um, to our nose area so um, mouth breathing is an option but it's not recommended for regular life as you miss out on a lot of the benefits that your nose and your sinus give which is the moistening filtering and warming of air as it goes into the lungs it is very important to do that so that you do not damage them uh, in the cold especially uh, our cold climates can cause a lot of damage to lungs when you're only breathing through your mouth and if you're breathing very quickly. The cleft palate, something we've talked about a little bit before, it is a passage um, that connects the mouth and the nasal cavity, or the nasal cavity and the oral cavity. Uh, it is often uh, going through the hard palate, sometimes into the soft palate. You can have a double cleft, you can have a partial cleft. Uh, and this can sometimes cause people to have a higher voice as there is not a seal here. And again, it's easy, easily repaired with surgery at an early age. The pharynx is your throat. It is a cavity that connects the oral cavity and the nasal passage to the lower respiratory system. The pharynx is part of the digestive system and part of the conducting zone of the respiratory system. So the conducting zone is essentially the air collecting portions of your mouth and your nose uh, into your throat. So that is the conducting zone, the part that kind of funnels air into your lungs. Um, and this pharynx also filters, warms, and moistens the air as it brings it into your lungs. So again, a very important function. The pharynx, as we know, is conventionally divided into three sections. There's the nasopharynx, or the nose part of the pharynx the oropharynx, or the mouth part of the pharynx, and the laryngopharynx, or the uh, larynx part of the pharynx, uh, that is essentially near your voice box. And again, the function is to connect the nose and the mouth to the lower respiratory system, um, and to allow us to eat and breathe at the same time. So we have the uh, three types of pharynx. The oropharynx and the nasopharynx are the upper and middle parts of the throat that direct air downwards into the laryngopharynx and the lower respiratory system. We have, yes, a picture here. Uh, this would be the nasopharynx. We have the oropharynx, and then the laryngopharynx would be this portion. And the larynx is right here. It is the front tube. The esophagus is the back tube, and the um, trachea, or the windpipe, is the front tube. And we have our epiglottis here that does the folding down to block the windpipe when we're eating food. So again, we have the epiglottis. It is a leaf-shaped flap in the throat that prevents food from entering the windpipe 
and the lungs. It stands open during breathing, which allows air into the larynx. It is also open while you're speaking, which is why speaking and eating can be very difficult to do. Um, you need to have that epiglottis open and closed at the same time. Epiglottitis, epiglottitis is an inflammation of the epiglottis that can result from an infection or other causes such as physical trauma. A, severe, a severely swollen epiglottis can block the airway causing breathing difficulties, which can be fatal. Check out a couple of these videos which show exactly what the epiglottis is and does if you need that refresher from the digestion unit. The larynx is what we call the voice box. Um, it is the organ at the top of the neck uh, the top of the throat right here in males you can often feel the Adam's apple um, and if you press hard enough you can kind of um, feel the hard cartilage as it expands that larger portion is the housing of your um, vocal cords so it is the organ at the top of the neck involved in breathing and producing sound it is also protecting the top of the trachea so the larynx houses the vocal cords and manipulates pitch and volume, which is essential for phonation. So essentially it manipulates how high or low your voice goes and the volume of it, how loud it is, which is essential for speaking. But phonation is speaking. So um, we can manipulate uh, in different ways the pitch and volume of our voices using microphones or using different, uh, if you use helium, you can make it go higher. Uh, which makes your voice sound different. So here's a picture of your larynx. Essentially, this is a camera that's gone into the throat uh, just past the epiglottis. Uh, there is cartilage that is hard that protects it um, so that you can't like push it in easily, but these are the vocal cords and they'll tighten up or they'll widen and loosen depending on how high or low you want your voice to go. So check out these video. Check out these videos. Um, they're different videos of people making their voice go up and down. It's very important that you realize uh, or know these different gases that cause these different things. Helium is um, pretty common, but sulfur, sulfur hexafluoride and xenon are both a little bit less common. Um, probably you haven't seen them before. What I'd like you to do now is your job. You go to this website again uh, and do some research about how the larynx works, answer some questions. I believe they're all in order, but if you need anything, please let me know. And I will see you in the next lesson.